Before you buy the Neuron Perception, I want you to look at this video because it's very important that you don't get the wrong idea. Now when you first look at all the advertising and all the other things that's going on with the Neuron Perception, it is a good piece of hardware and it's fun. But you first of all have to have an idea of what you're going to be using it for and how it is used and durability of it. So when you look at the advertisement, it looks like you just stick on a suit and just go out there and you just do your thing. That's not really what works. And if you look at all the other videos out there, all the YouTube videos, people have a lot of people around them when they're doing it. And I, and I would wager that most people who buy this thing, the majority of the people who would buy it, really kind of want it for their own little project. They don't have a whole bunch of people that's going to be working with them. It's not a big studio because they'll be using something much more sophisticated and they're going to have to put it on themselves. And that's why when I did the video, including this one, I'm wearing it actually as I'm speaking. I put it on myself so I can give you the true insight as to how this thing would work and that you wouldn't need a team to do it. So when you first um, purchase it, you pull it out and the first thing that that threw me off um, was that there was these nodes that you had and I didn't know this before I thought it was a suit that you'd be able to put on you know just self-contained but there's these nodes that you get uh, and these nodes go into the sockets and they come into this canister and the reason why they come into this aluminum canister is because they're very fragile they can't be next to a computer they can't be next to a keyboard they can't be next to any motor or anything moving they can't be next to any radiation they can't be next to any magnetism they can't be next to anything I'm surprised that they can even you know just oxygen doesn't just disintegrate them so that's the first thing that threw me off is how many things these things can't be next to that they need to be next to because when you are next to a computer, especially when you're doing it by yourself, it says don't put it next to a keyboard. Don't put it next to a monitor. Don't put it next to the computer. Don't put it next to a laptop. Don't, all these things that you absolutely need this thing next to, this can't be next to. So that's the first thing that you might want to be aware of. And they're very prone to um, uh, malfunctioning. So then you get those and you put them in the suit. So if you have a 32-piece suit, all those pieces, all these nodes, go into all the sockets. And putting them into the socket is pretty straightforward. The sockets look something like this. And then you're going to push it straight down. Let me turn that down. You have to place it evenly. Then you have to push it straight down very hard. And then when you pull it out, it's going to be even harder to pull out. So it really locks in there. And so I would suggest having some sort of... Uh, jackhammer or something like that to get these things out or a pin would suffice whatever something very very strong to pull these things out and you got to do that another 32 times so if you thought you were just going to hop into this suit like Iron Man and just start doing flips and, and kicks and stuff like that and then the computer catching it that's not what's going to happen so I wanted to make that clear it is a setup if there's time that goes into this and you can't be outside with it really because of their recommendation about heat radiation all these other things the cool thing is that all the socket areas have these little things on the back that tell you which one it is. Like this one shows is for the foot. If I backtrack this, there's the thigh um, and the shins, you know, the and then the foot one. So that's pretty cool that they, you know, that's pretty straightforward. Once you have it all connected and put into place, it's pretty. You're pretty mobile with it. Right here. I have the arm and right now I'm wearing a glove where there's a connector here and a connector here and I have the one where it connects the fingers too so that's a whole bunch of other ones that you'd have to do and a lot of times what people do is they don't wear the whole suit and do all the movement with this which probably be ideal um, because there's a lot of problems that can happen when you're doing the suit and I'll show you that later um, they'll just use the hand to be able to add more hand gestures to the character or just the upper body to add more upper body gestures to the character um, and both arms they have those connectors in there the shoulders the thighs and that's the whole suit and I would recommend wearing something like this where you can move around and then on the back if I could turn myself around on the back there's these connectors up here one on the head and one on the lower back so this part of it is pretty cool because it's pretty straightforward and it, it is comfortable 
to be able to do whatever you wanted to do. But to make this thing work right, there are some added added uh, cost in this. What they don't show you anywhere on their site is that even when you look at this showcase thing, right? They got people dancing around and I get to do this and they show all this other stuff. There's a lot of other things you might need, including to make some of this stuff work, okay? So there's a lot of other things that you're going to need, starting with the fact that in order to be able to do anything away from your computer, you're going to need something like this. And this is going to be a power adapter, uh, so self-contained, and it, it can power your hub. Uh, secondly, what you're going to need is access to your, your hub, or what they recommend is you buying another hub, a network hub. So, you, not only do you have to buy this, you have to buy the network hub, and then you have to set that up so so the neuron can have its own private, you know, its own network that it connect it can connect to, um, which then connects to your computer, or you can connect it to your home hub. And if that's the case, you're going to need administrative access. So those two extra costs are going to catch you by surprise. And I really think they should have a bundle with all that stuff online but they don't so that's another issue for another day so once you have everything connected you can then plug in and you you might hear it I'm gonna plug in the, the, the hub on my neuron and you'll hear it beep since I already set up the network there's the beep and then as you can see it comes up here on the screen and I go ahead and click connect there and it's gonna search for my neuron once it finds it it's going to go ahead and add the character here and I already calibrated everything as you can see the legs and everything working if you ever wanted to calibrate it you can come here and this application comes with the neuron so you don't have to worry about buying this separately uh, right now as you see I'm sitting at the uh, the table um, and like I said before with the neuron nodes, you notice if you look at this arm here, my first video I did with the neuron, I put it away in a nice place, wasn't too hot, and these are completely broken. These, these, these nodes are completely gone. Um, I even tried to replace them, so there's some of them were fixed, and then something else is wrong with the connectors. And I think this is happening to a lot of people because when you go online, and you try to search for any any sort of help you'll see a lot of people questioning this if you go to their forum or you even just go online and check out uh, some uh, the general discussions and stuff like that people are looking for help for this and they spent a lot of money and they're not getting it because here is the issue if you want to find help that's where you gotta go actually this is where you have to go so if you happen to be heading that way Give me, tell me, so I can give you my problem, I get everyone else's problem, and you can send it to them, because they don't really answer their phone, and they don't really answer their emails. Um, if I get an answer back from the emails, based off of my system, you know, um, th these errors, these malfunctions, and some of these nodes, then I'll give you guys uh, a heads up on that. But so far, the customer service is not really good. They don't even give you really good customer service access. This is probably the first thing we probably should have looked at before I even bought this thing. Or I probably should have looked at not we. You meaning, we meaning you should look at that now since I've already been duped by it. So hardly any customer service, hardly any uh, support out there on the web uh, regards to this. So uh, here's the software. I have everything connected. Now the software has to be running. And like I said before, you have to make sure you know what you're going to be using this for. Okay. So a lot of times you record this and you can just hit record and start recording it. It'll record the data and then you can save that in a file and then go to Maya and put it to a character. But the easiest way to do this is to do it through the software that they're actually selling alongside this. And that is the iClone. Right now it's the iClone 6. And they are actually giving you a free upgrade to the iClone 7 if you buy it right now, which is a pretty good deal. And with iClone, it's pretty cool because you can make characters and you can add your own characters and it makes it easier. I don't use iClone for animation. Um, I use it mainly to be able to get a quick character out 
and then I can go to Maya and do some more detailed stuff or go into ZBrush or something like that. But if you want to use um, iClone for animation, that's perfectly fine. It makes things a lot easier in some respects. But in a long-term production respects, it makes things a little bit harder. So, uh, and that's, but I'm not talking about iClone right now. But let's say I wanted to connect uh, my axis with the iClone. I first run this here. I'm going to go to the plugins, go to the neuron perception, and then go here. And this is going to pop up. And I can go ahead and connect. Uh, and now it's saying that the connect axis neuron server failed. And a lot of times that's because this port right here has to be the same as the port in the axis. So I'm going to go here and find out what port I'm running. Oops, not that. I'm going to go to my settings and I can see I'm at 709 and that's where it's broadcasting. See it's broadcasting, broadcasting right here. 709 and it's broadcasting BVH which is what the iClone takes. So I have to bring that to 709 and then I click OK and then I can connect. And now once, you, once I do that it is connected. Let me uh, but I don't have a character here, so how retarded is that? Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and disconnect that and go here. I'm going to add an avatar of any character right there. Once that avatar is there, I can go now to the plugin, perception, and then connect. And now I can preview, and as you can see, I'm connected to the character, and I can walk around. And it might be some artifacts or anything like that, but I'm not tied to the desk because I have that um, that power supply connected, and the distance will go as far as my network will allow me. Right now, I'm walking around the room. I'm waving with my good hand. I am flowing my hands around around my head. Wow, look at that. I can go through my face. Can anyone else do that? I can go th right through my face. Look at that. But you are going to tell me that I don't know what I'm talking about, but I can do. Let me see how far this thing could go. Woo. But you, so you see, once it's connected, you can have a lot of fun. Now, I didn't do that with my hand, by the way. I didn't try to do that with my hand. That's... I think this thing is off a little bit. Hold on. Dude. All right. So I'm going to just keep this hand away a little bit. So that way it looks kind of legitimate. And then see, you can make the guy walk a cool walk. Or you can make him walk like Sanford and Son. Now, the, one of the problems that you might run into with this is that if you, if you flip, like say if I do a flip, which I can't because I'm wearing these headphones. But if I were to do a flip, I would. Uh, there would be some calibration problems. So let me see about go, uh, going down to the ground as I'm on that one knee, and I'm turning it a little bit to see how that would work. And I go into the two knees. I can raise my hand. I can go into the push-up stance, and this is where the fingers will come into play. And then I can move that around, and I can do a push-up. One arm push-up. Anybody want to challenge me? So, as you can see, you can do a lot of cool things with it. I'm back here sitting down, and my character's still in place, still con connected, <laughs> um, and and it could be very fun, but. I don't like the fact that this arm right here is jacked up and that I don't have those nodes working and this thing is busted and I paid a lot of money for it. So here's one thing you have to remember. Here's the main thing you have to remember. Number one, if you're a novice and or you just want a hobbyist and you want to fool around with it, it's very fun to do, it's very fun to use. If you want to use it in production, use it on a very minimal scale. Do not get it thinking you're going to do your entire production with it because you're going to find that these these nodes are going to break. Uh, they're going to malfunction and you can't finish your production or you're going to have to do some hand animation. Secondly, have another application that you're going to be using it with. For instance, if you're going to be using it with iClone, that's fine. iClone seems to work pretty good. 
Uh, it used to crash a lot until iClone 6, so there's still some crashing and stuff going on. But again, I don't use iClone for the main application. I would use something like Maya, something like 3D Studio Max, um, and then for the compositing, After Effects, and then for some other stuff, Premiere and all that sort of stuff. But I would not use these for the full-on production because you're going to run into problems. These things use a lot of memory, and it looks like it has a lot of memory leaks. I'm not sure. But it does use a lot of memory, and you'll be running into issues with that. Other than that, uh, if you really want to get into this, or you have a project that needs to be done, make sure that it is not something that's extensive. Something not like a don't, do, don't think you're going to do a feature-length movie with this. Uh, and don't really think you're going to be getting any kind of support as, as as far as it goes right now. Okay, so if anything changes, I'll go ahead and put it up on YouTube. You know, if they come back and say, hey, you know, we can fix, we can, we'll, we'll replace that and that's what we normally do, then I'll come back on YouTube and I'll, and I'll tell you guys that that's what happened. But as far as it goes right now, just understand this. Get it? If you have money to spend and you don't really care about the, $2,000 overall that you'd probably be spending to have it all working the way you want it to work um, or just wait until something better comes out because these nodes are way too fragile uh, and I don't like the fact that you can't just put the suit on you have to put all these nodes in you have to spend all the time putting the nodes in then you gotta spend all the time taking them out and they can't be next to a computer and they can't be next to heat and all these other things so there's a lot of great good things about this once it's set up but then there's a whole bunch of bad things about setting it up if you're a novice at this and you just wanted something to work. So this is not the thing that just going to, is just going to work. Make sure you have administrative access to your network or go ahead and buy a whole new a hub. Uh, make sure you have an external battery pack. Make sure that uh, you're willing to lose money based off of the fact that some of these nodes are going to break. Make sure you're aware that these nodes are going to break and make sure that you're aware that you're not going to get any customer service in regards to that. Um, that's how I feel about right now. All right. So if you have any questions, go ahead and give me a call. I mean, not a call. Don't call me. If you have any questions, go ahead and email me. Or actually, don't email me. If you have any questions, put them in the comments below.